They get paid to sit there. They don't get paid. They don't have to be paid to help. I guess that's true. Yeah. They are paid by the hour, not by how much they do. I'm sure you're less annoying than like all the engineering people that I'm sure they're super good with their teeth. <laughs> I think, yeah. Oh, yeah, they are. Like, I have this old lady professor. She has like, like 50 tabs open. She's complaining about my ICS wiper computer. I wonder why. But they tell her. No. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> we have an unknown one. Series, and the series produced uh, autocorrelation 0.8.24.471. And in this case, I want to fit the R11 model. In the previous case, what we did is we made use of uh, a given R11 model, and we went on and uh, computed uh, the pi weights after converting it to AR infinity. I suppose I could do the same thing with M8 infinity. I didn't do that part yet because I want to save time. Um, once I show this type of a problem, and if we have time next time, I'll do that M8 infinity. Otherwise, you can do it in the homework. By the way, is our, is our final next Thursday? Or yes. So, Row one half, row two half is given, but we want to fit an R11 model. The model that we have is x day plus t1 x day minus 1 equals epsilon t plus theta 1 epsilon t minus 1. That's what we use. Right? So we want to know what phi one and theta one are. Well, the autocorrelation values are given to us, right? We looked at the ACF plot. We got these autocorrelation values, and I'm telling you, these values were generated from an R one or more. Now. Um, How do we find P1 and P1? So we know an on the one model can be expressed as an AR infinity model. Yes. That's something we know. Well, I just did an example of that. So k equals zero to infinity, i k x d minus k is the AR infinity equivalent model. And we found the pi weight, and if we found the pi weight, then we would have our AR model. Since I'm looking for phi one and theta one, I need at least two equations. Do you agree to find both phi one and theta one? So I need at least up to pi two to find the values of phi one and theta one. Correct. So let's go all the way up to. So pi naught plus pi one x to minus one plus pi two x to minus two. That is always one, and we we had. 
pi or we have pi one x two minus one pi two x two minus two. Correct. Which I can rewrite as one plus pi one b x two plus pi two b squared x two. Correct. I can pull up. Oh, I forgot x t there. My bad. You know, when you plug in pi zero, you've got to have x t. So if I pull x t out, I will have one plus pi one b plus pi two b squared. Correct. I'm just going to say phi one is pi one and phi two is pi two. Good. Phi one is pi one, phi two is pi two. Um, to avoid confusion between this phi one and the phi one up there, let's put Star, tick, it doesn't matter. Which one should we use, star or prime? Let's use star. Because I don't want us to get confused with this and that. Up there. If I rewrote the expression, then I would have x t 1 plus p 1 star b p 2 star. B squared. That looks like an A or two or two degree. And we know that the characteristic polynomial for that side. I could get into the entire concept of is this going to be in vertical, uh, excuse me, causal, is it going to be stationary, all this stuff. But our objective now is to find P1 and P1. So, how do we get that? How do we find or fit an AR model if you know the order correlations? What did we use? So we are going to use your Walker method to estimate the values of phi one star and phi two star. Well, do we remember? That's row one, row two. Very good. All row one hat. Right, row one hat going to answer me row one one. Oh, yeah, that's right. One row one hat, row one hat one. So if we can plug those values in. We're going to erase the middle part, but I, because I need one of the left. So row one hat is 0 0.8124, row two hat is 0 0.471. P1 star, P2 star, 
We know how to do this going back to second unit. Um, A, B, V, we have in that we can find a solution to V, which is V inverse A. And what is that? So V, the estimated value, happens to be 1.26 and negative 0.56. Negative 0.56. Does it much? Okay. So V one star is one point two six. V two star is negative point five six. Good. Using these two values, we can determine if the series is going to be stationary or not. How? Close. It's not just the magnitude of phi, more likely to be not stationary. Um, another way, you are right, but magnitude is not always the only condition. So, going to point the roots of the roots, right? Once you take these values, put it in that characteristic polynomial. And if the roots lie outside the unit circle, sure, it will be stationary. Otherwise, no. We can do that at this step. Uh, another reason as to why we can't just go with the magnitudes of these is because we're going to talk about an Alma 1 1 model. We have to look at the magnitude of phi 1 and phi 1, not those two. Good. So we got those values. And we wrote pi one was P one star pi two was P two star. Correct. And that said, if I have a one star, which is 1.6, I know from my AR infinity expression as to what pi one will be, because that's why I derived, you know, the AR infinity version of an R one one. So what is pi one? From our first problem, it is simply V1 minus theta 1. Yes? What is pi 2? What is the recursive equation that we had? Pi k would be negative one raised k minus one, theta one raised k minus one times pi one. Right? Or k greater than or equal to two. So in our plug in two, I would have negative one raised two minus one which is one. Theta one raised two minus one, one. Pi one, which is one point two six. Good. So, Pi 2 is negative 0.56. I'm using the recursive equation to rewrite Pi 2 as that. 
and I know pi 1, plug pi 1 in. Now I can solve for theta 1. Do you agree? So <coughs> what is theta 1? Uh, 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 point four, four, four. Makes sense. Point four, four, four. And if I know theta 1, I can easily find p1. Use the first equation. So v1 minus theta 1 is 0.444. So we stay, stay 1.26. So 1.7. So v1 would be 1.7. But looking at the magnitudes of v1 and theta 1, we can conclude that it is not stationary. We want that to be less than one. But we did fit our model, correct? So our fitted model X two plus V one one point seven X two minus one equals epsilon T plus theta one, which is point four four four. Is this model cause? Is the model inverted? Yes. Based on the AR side, a conclusion is not stationary. Based on the MA side, it is stationary. But if you look at the AR model as a whole, what is that series stationary? Well, they both have to be stationary. Yes, for it to be stationary. Yes, so it is not stationary. And we sort of picked it up from here, but even though sometimes we can kind of do that, guess what? The proper way would be this. So I arguably pick these values, right? Um, in practice, um, if we ended up with a scenario of this sort, um, we would need to fit a non stationary model. But we wouldn't even go this far into fitting a non stationary time series, excuse me, a stationary time series, because there are ways to determine if a series is stationary or not by looking at um, pictures such as ACF, the ACF, other measures. So I did this example to demonstrate how you can get fit a model if you know the raw values. If I had proper raw values over here, I might end up getting a stationary model. Then my series would be stationary. I'll be clear. 